Hello friends, welcome to my channel together with Abhi. Today we are going to start with a completely new topic which is SQS, SWF and SNS. Also wanted to let you know that this happens to be the last video in the web series, uh, AWS for beginners. Uh, probably there are too many other things that we could have covered. There, there would always be too many things that we should target to cover. But AWS is a very big uh, area, very big space, which might not be uh, you know possible to cover in a span of few days or a few hours. So uh, probably we'll keep on making more videos as you want, as you demand, so you can comment about it. But uh, just to let you know that as a beginner, whatever things that we should be pr practically be focusing on mainly like S3, EC2, VPC, RDS, and a few additional services. We probably have touched upon each and everything somewhere in the as part of this course. So without further ado, let uh, let's start off with this SQS. So what is SQS? As the name suggests, it is a queue service, queuing service. So a message uh, queue. Uh, you might have known about it this is a very important application very important part of the overall technical architecture of for any applications so the main purpose is let's say there are two applications we want to decouple the scenario between them the communication between them one of the servers one of the applications is able to really process your uh, process the uh, messages or the process the task very fast uh, however the other could not so because of the delay in processing uh, you might want to just store the inputs somewhere so whenever the application server is available it might be able to take up those messages or those inputs and process them so message queues they provide this functionality that you are able to store your messages or your inputs at a safe place okay now this has to be a fast and a reliable service you do not want why fast because you want to you know quickly there could be too many consumers and producers who want to you know uh, work on these queues so you really want the service to be fast why reliable because you do not want that your messages get lost message lost is like a transaction missed okay so you do not want any such activity that's why it has to be reliable it has to be scalable because as and when more consumers and more producers uh, get added you just want that it could be uh, able to take up those activities that is why scalable and as you might uh, know that all these activities would require a lot of management and a lot of work now the good part here is with this service this uh, is completely managed by aws so the headache is entirely on aws to manage all these activities as i told you this is used to decouple the components you can transmit any volumes of data to other services, ensures delivery of message at least once. This is very important because as I mentioned to you, reliability depends on whether the messages are getting delivered at least once or not. Which come, which uh, brings us to another point, at least once, you know, it, so there is a possibility that your message might get delivered more than once, which could be an issue. So we'll come to that later in the next slide. And the last point about it is multiple readers and writers are possible for interacting with the same queue. Obviously a great demand, a great functionality because you would not want that only for one queue there should be one receiver or one consumer and one producer or writer. So this is going to limit the way we can use this functionality. So what a Amazon simple queue service provides, for the same queue multiple readers and writers are possible. So it is a great service for uh, the purpose of message queuing. Now let's look at the probable issues. The first is first in, first out, not necessary. So you might uh, feel like if in case the message which has been uh, generated first, it will be consumed first. No, that is not the case. Uh, you know, this service doesn't guarantee that kind of a functionality. So the onus, the burden lies on your application to handle such a scenario. So how you can handle such a scenario? With every message, you provide a sequence information that this is the first message of the sequence. The other message is the second message of the sequence. So even if the second message arrives before the first message to the application, even in that case, based on the sequence ID, they can act you know, accordingly handle the scenario. The second issue uh, with the services, message might get delivered more than once. As I mentioned to you in the last slide also, it guarantees that the message will be delivered at least one, but it doesn't guarantee that it will not be delivered more than once. 
So for handling such a scenario, your application needs to see that even if a message gets delivered more than once, we are able to handle it by just you know having some duplication checks or something. You can handle such scenarios. Now let's come to the next topic are the key concepts. Key concepts around this service is one is a visibility timeout. What visibility timeout is? Uh, as the name suggests that something is not going to be visible for some time. Okay, what is that something? It is a message. The message is not going to be visible for some time period. So this time period is called as visibility timeout. And to whom will it not be visible? It will not be visible to other consumers. Okay, so a producer, a writer of the message generates a message, puts it in the queue. This message is now uh, ready to be consumed by multiple consumers, let's say C1, C2 and C3. As soon as C1 starts processing or consuming the message, this message is not going to be available or is not going to be visible, it's not going to be available for access or consumption to other consumers C2 and C3 for how long? For the period, time period mentioned in the visibility timeout. Okay, so if in case the visibility timeout is 30 seconds, from the start of uh, the consumption of this message by another consumer, all other consumers cannot access or consume this message for 30 seconds. Now, a similar concept related to it is delay queues. Now, what delay queues are, they are the similar mechanism. The only difference is with every message you are telling a delay second. Okay. So a delay seconds could be like around 20 seconds. Okay, this could be a queue attribute. Okay, so a delay queue has that any message which comes into my purview, into my queue, it is not going to be consumed by any consumer before 20 seconds. Okay, so the concepts are same. Visibility timeout and delay queues are same. The only difference is visibility timeout starts as soon as the message is get started to get consumed by any consumer. However, delay queue, the timeout, visibility timeout or uh, non-consumption period of that message starts as soon as the message arrives in the queue. Okay, so I hope the point is clear. Dead letter queue, as the name suggests, if in case there is any message, any letter uh, that we signify as a message, if in case it is dead for some reason, it is not be it has had has got some issues, it is not being able to consume, or any other issue that might could have uh, probably happened with this message, those messages are get stored in some kind of a spatial queue, which is called as a DLQ or a dead letter queue. So the purpose being later at some point of time, you can just go and see what messages uh, you know define or come under the purview of a dead letter. And what is the issue with that? You can just go and troubleshoot that uh, message. Next concept is long polling. Polling, as you would know uh, here, because there is a message, you you know, an application is polling to this queue again and again just to see whether the message has arrived, a message has arrived or not. So it is, it keeps on polling. But obviously, uh, if in case we keep on polling every, uh, you know, just in the constant manner, you know, you know, uh, just we have a loop and it is just polling every millisecond and it is going to consume a lot of resources. So it eats up a lot of resources, which is not a good mechanism. So to avoid such scenarios, to have, a, you know, less burden on our resources, what we can do is we can uh, put in some time frame, you know, that we are going to poll after this many, uh, you know, seconds or this many times. So there's a wait time seconds, okay? So based on that, so uh, wait time second, if in case this argument to the receive message is up to, let's say 30 seconds, then this uh, is going to be polled again for the message check would be done after 30 seconds. So that is the, uh, uh, you know, purpose of long polling. Now let's come to message attributes. Obviously, if there are message, there would be certain attributes. The first attribute that comes to our mind is firstly the ID. There would be some message ID. So as soon as you send a message, the SQS uh, provides you with a message ID, an ID of its own that it generates, which is an identifier for this message, which you can keep with you just to identify and check what is my pair, what is the identity of my message. The second is queue URL. As you would know, everything that is within AWS purview, it actually uh, is through HTTP, HTTPS. 
uh, rest api calls and everything so there is a queue url which gets created queue name needs to be unique the url needs to be unique and it gets generated by sqs for you the third thing uh, which is uh, kind of important is a receipt handle so whenever a message gets received a receipt handle is provided to you the purpose of this receipt handle is to let know that it is good to get deleted okay the purpose is uh, yes it can be deleted because it has been received until a message has been received it cannot be deleted so you need some mechanism to tell okay this message is good to get deleted if in case you want to but how would we get to know if in case a receipt handle if in case we need you know, we have we can we come to know that yes it has already been, already been received so these are the key concepts around sqs let's go to simple workflow service and i hope as the name suggests there is a workflow now what is a workflow let's say you order a pizza okay you order a pizza online so what happens is you place an order this is one task this is one activity that you have done based on that some next activity happens your order is getting processed it has been sent to the kitchen the kitchen uh, folks they are workers are actually processing that application the task thereafter it prepares you know uh, the your pizza is ready it has been uh, sent to the delivery department the delivery department has already started your delivery uh, you know some uh, delivery boy it has already left from the point of its generation so it is going to get received to you then you are going to receive it then you are going to pay for it and then your workflow gets closed so there is a kind of a flow an activities task so the unit of work is called as a task but in term of swf we say it as an activity obviously these tasks are done by someone some applications which we say as workers these workers could be ec2 applications on your ec2 or it these could be on premises so swf assign tasks to workers and monitors their progress and manages their state uh, now as obviously swf as the name suggests it is the you know the main uh, workflow area or main flow service what it does it it provides task to the workers it tracks the progress whether the task has been completed or not based on the state of the task i am going to you know take up the next step as part of this workflow so there comes a few actors in this workflow the first actor is the starter application okay so whenever you go to let's say pizza hut or somewhere you do you go to the ui and you place order so whenever you are clicking place order that is the workflow starter you are starting the workflow okay the next is deciders decider is like a decision tree what happens what has to be logically done as the next step based on the activity based on the state that you have achieved on your last task you go through yes or no has this been reached a positive state if yes okay do this activity as the next thing if it is in a, a failed state no it has not reached a successful state what you need to do so there are certain decider application so those are called as deciders and lastly there are activity workers the purpose of activity workers is just to process or the task based on some input and provide you some output so these are activity workers and obviously based on these there are uh, task one are activity task the other are decision task we are not going to cover the lambda task because those are advanced topic maybe we can cover it as part of some other video in the future days but as a right now uh, mainly we'll concentrate upon activity and decision task so activity task are the task provided to activity workers and decision task are for deciders to take up to decide the logical flow the next flow now a uh, workflow closing state could be completed cancelled failed or time out obviously uh, if it has to be closed whether it would be either successful or failed or cancelled okay so successful is obviously completed or cancelled or failed or time out would be a failed state so this is uh, just to let you know that aws provides this kind of a service simple workflow service if your uh you know requirement suits the scenario which is covered under simple workflow service you might just want to try the service because it already has all the features available uh, which are fully managed by aws 
you just need to configure your applications to uh, you know provide the decider the activity workers the starters and rest aws can take care of your for you the last uh, that we are going to decide work on or discuss here is the simple notification service we already have used the service in the past in the uh, in past modules as you would have seen when we configured the threshold that uh, once your bill you know it moves over 10 dollars some notification should be provided to you now that notification uh, we chose that it should be provided as an email so what happens is any kind of an alert any kind of a notification when it gets generated it goes to a topic okay and this topic already has subscribers to it okay so there could be three subscribers let's say a b and c the a application or the user wants itself to be notified using email the b application wants to be notified using sms and the c maybe through http or some other mechanism so topic contains all the methods for communication to the subscriber and the list of subscribers okay so what happens is this a a is uh, amazon simple notification service it uh, creates notifications and those notifications are provided to the topic and topic has got subscribers to it with the methods they need to be communicated to so as the name suggests since i'm always about talking about subscriber subscriber here so obviously this uses or follows a publish or publisher or subscriber a subscriber model which we also say as producer and consumer model so this is a very useful service we use this service in integration to many other services like uh, cloud watch monitoring uh, you know even encryption and different other s3 aws uh, ec2 wherever we want any kind of a notification this can be integrated uh, with all those services we can use in collaboration and it is a very good useful uh, notification service to be used for so uh, now let us move on to the question and answers the first question is amazon simple queue service delivers your message in the following way first in first out last in first out no particular order is guaranteed as i told you no particular order is guaranteed there are certain shortcomings that we have to deal up uh, in our application itself what actor in a amazon swf defines work coordination logic by specifying sequence of task and their associated conditions this is decider the correct answer is decider as i told you the decider is like a decision tree what activity needs to be done in the next uh, as a next work item and so it does specify the sequence of task and based on certain conditions yes or no so this is a decision tree kind of activity that's why i decider here the last is amazon simple notification service requires receivers to pull the service for a new message no the answer is false as i told you it works on publisher subscriber model so there is no need of polling as such so the answer is correct answer is false so guys that is all for today um, and as a matter of fact uh, not uh, just the end of this module it is the end of this complete web series aws introduction for beginners as i told you reiterating that we have just covered the core modules which i think are very important and at the heart of aws like s3 ec2 vp and vpc and uh, uh, rds and just gave you uh, you know touched upon a few other things like auto scaling uh, cli usage monitoring encryption along the way we might in iam we might just not have dive deep into all those things but if you want uh, me to you know prepare some videos dedicated to particular area just let me know comment to me and i can look into creating those videos for you but as a beginner for uh, you know few exam few beginner level certifications like aws certified solution architect uh, uh, associate solution architect devops engineers this should be a good starting point for you this should cover all the basic understanding for you so you can you learn, really start your journey on a good note for aws so i hope um, you have been able to grasp some good understanding with that note uh, see you in the next uh, web series as and when i prepare it i'll hope uh, I'll, I'll let you know and you might just get notifications if in case you have already subscribed to my channel so please do subscribe to it comment uh, like and share with others thank you for your time thank you Thank you.